Hey, welcome to another episode of Lent Redlines. Um, this month on Modification Monthly, I have invested my time and hard earned money in power modifications, which is my favorite type of modification. There's lots of different choices out there for you to choose from. Um, obviously, I've invested a few um, invested in a few products here that we're going to talk about and uh, I'm sure people will pull me to pieces on my decision on what I've bought. So let's do a little unboxing video on what I've bought and next month when I go to MSS Performance in Essex they'll be setting up my bike. Uh, they're quite well known throughout the country as a reputable bike tuner, quite well known in British Superbikes, built some amazing bikes generally and uh, yeah can't wait to get all these products installed. So the first product we're going to talk about, um, quite well known, is the Dynojet Power Commander 5. These particular units go for around about three to four hundred pounds for a BMW S1000. Me generally, uh, I'm never going to buy one of these brand new because I bought loads of Power Commanders second hand and never had a problem with them. So as long as you're not buying a unit which has basically just been smashed to pieces and looks like it's been water damaged, you're pretty much going to be rest assured with the quality of the Dynojet product. Um, this particular unit um, I picked up again on eBay and paid half of what you would pay for a brand new unit. Um, it's pretty much spotless. As you can see, it comes with the original box, comes with the original packaging as well. So it's just clarifying some of the accessories that you can get. So you've got the, the quick shifter, don't need that, my bike's got one map selection function um, I guess you've got a load of custom maps gives you the ability to scroll through them um, speed gear input analog input a few other trick bits for race use you've also got the auto tune accessory which is basically um, enables that particular unit to custom map your bike on the go and auto tune that's basically what it does and also you've got the color LCD unit display again for track use there's also another component to this particular unit called the uh, secondary fuel module. Now, if you are tuning your bike beyond stage one, which is basically what I'm doing at the minute, air filter, power commander and exhaust, you'll need the secondary fuel, fuel module to uh, basically adjust and customise the fueling of the second set of injectors that the S1000 has. As I'm not going that far with my tuning, then I spoke to MSS Performance and they basically said I wouldn't need it. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine just with the standard power commander. Um, in the box, pretty limited really. So obviously you get the module, as you can see, pretty spotless considering I bought it second hand for a fraction of the price what you're paying you. Obviously you've got the harness in here, power, input, pretty easy to install, but I would never tackle something like this myself because I know very well that you need a rolling road custom tune, really. I'm not going to take any risks with detonating my engine or running the engine too lean or, or too rich. Um, there's also a, a DVD ROM in here, which I'm assuming basically enables you to custom map the bike if needed. And there's a little uh, USB connector there, which I can only assume connects to another device, which enables you to adjust the settings on the Power Commander and do your custom tune. So that's the Power Commander, nothing too unordinary about that. Um, these are readily available online. There's also other manufacturers out there who will offer you the same sort of functionality. The second um, item that I'm going to talk about is probably a very contentious subject online and that is air filters. Now, I've had K&Ns before in the past, and basically I do see a K&N as the very sort of bog standard OEM replacement. The major benefit is you can service them, and they don't need to be replaced really, unless you get some real damage on them. Now, there's lots of different manufacturers out there, but I did do a bit of research, and one of the manufacturers that I came across that received excellent feedback with regards to power gains, and obviously that is what I'm after, um, is a company called Sprint Filter. If you can see that there, Sprint Filter. Now, like most or most mainstream manufacturers of air filters, there is different variations of the air filter. You get one designed for road use, which gives you massive filtration. 
um, but doesn't give you a great deal of flow. So they're basically your OEM type filters. You've then got one in between, which is suitable for road use and track use. So it gives you a good degree of filtration, but more flow, equally more power. And then you've got the full-on race ones, which basically give you very minimal filtration, but maximizes your flow. Now, I do ride for all conditions, so I've gone for the one in between, because I want power, but also want good filtration, so I'm not sucking any nasties into the engine. Um, this particular air filter is Sprint Filter, as I just mentioned. It's the POAF1, which is the, as I said, the in-between track and road filter. And as I said, gives you really good filtration but also gives you that um, good degree of flow, so you get a good degree of power out of it. So as you can see, you know, you can practically see through the filter. And what I like about this as well is it's a dry filter, so I don't have to oil it. To service it, all I do is take it out, I vacuum it off, blow all the bugs and debris that's built up um, in the little uh, weave compartments here, and then it's good to go again. Now, this particular brand isn't well known. Um, I haven't really ever heard of them before, but apparently they, they do um, service and um, supply products to the MotoGP circuit, so they must be half decent. And to buy one of these, you are looking probably three times the price of what you um, pay for a standard k &N. So I think your standard k and is about 60, 70 quid. This particular air filter cost me 220 pounds, which is a hell of a lot for an air filter but I do want to eke out as many brake horsepower as I can out of my engine, but not sacrifice too much infiltration. So I've gone with this um, because it's really well regarded online. It's supposed to be a top end filter, so I've invested the money where it needed to be invested. So hopefully I'll get some good power gains out of that. So the next product I'm gonna talk about is uh, the Acropovic headers. Now I do actually have the Acropovic end can and uh, that's an aluminium uh, slip-on, comes with the downpipe, but everything from there, I've got obviously got a catalytic converter and I've got the um, uh, mild steel headers that run back to the engine. So I've invested in some Acropovic headers, uh, bought these brand new, same as the air filter, and really expecting some good gains from these, hoping for a, a really good increase in sound, and yeah, can't wait to, uh, to get these fitted. So. They arrived today, so I'm going to try and work out how to unbox these. That looks like the one. Okay, uh, this product does not meet admissions compliance requirements for street or highway use. Really? I'll bear that in mind when I get my MOT, because basically if you get your MOT, they never do an admissions test. So your bike literally can't fail. I don't know what the law is in the UK, but basically when you go for an MOT, they do not do an admissions tests, and I think the general consensus, or the law, is that if your bike is louder than what it was when it was stock, then it's illegal. Which is absolutely ridiculous, because the amount of people in this country who run aftermarket exhausts and run, run aftermarket air filters is just mental. So, um, yeah, I'm not expecting to get really pulled over for this. So. I'm assuming this all goes together in sections, which it must do. Oh, there's a nice beefy downpipe. And then we've got the other part of the headers there with all the spring retainers. So again, being acropovic, um, I'm expecting really good build quality. It is, it is a stainless steel um, header, but if you want to go titanium, it's entirely up to you. To be honest, this header will never be seen. It's constantly behind a fairing. Um, so I didn't really see the need to go for titanium. Titanium's good because it turns that lovely blue color. But if it's never gonna be looked upon, you know, in my eyes, why spend twice the price on a titanium system if you can get the same sort of power gains out of a stainless steel system? So, looks all well packaged to me. Let's just uh, open up one of these and have a look at the uh, have a look at the, the workmanship from, from Acropovic. Um, as I said, I do have the Acropovic end can, so this system should go all nicely together. I actually didn't buy the end can myself. It came with my bike, and basically I think it was like a, an optional extra from the dealership when you originally purchased the bike new. 
So buying the Acropovic header, I had to be a little bit careful in what I bought because obviously the, um, the pipe size needs to marry up with my um, end cam, my slip on. Um, and I spoke to the people who I purchased this from. It actually came from a company called Cal Sport, quite a reputable parts supplier in the UK. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. The workmanship looks great, um, nice and new. So yeah, can't wait to get that installed. That is going to be absolutely awesome. And I'm assured that it's going to marry up with my uh, Acropovic end can, which I've currently got on the bike. So that's a brief update on the parts that I've invested in this, uh, this month. Um, I hope you found that of interest. Obviously on the 18th of May, I will be having this all installed by MSS Performance. And when I've got that installed, that'll all be rolling road tuned. And I'll make sure I do some videos on that to cover the installation as well. So you've been listening to Lead Red Lines. Hope you've enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.